Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors Amazon and Trend Micro. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. We are live here at Amazon reInvent in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal and noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. And we're here with Carl Vandenberg, VP of Product and Customer Success at Tibco, um, you know, formerly of JasperSoft. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you. We interviewed last year. You changed jerseys or put on I, a new shirt. I got Tibco I'm from the <laughs> JasperSoft, yeah. So <laughs> tell us about the, uh, what happened. So obviously yeah. we covered you guys. We covered JasperSoft for I think going back to Hadoop Summit's first one. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's the update? What's the update, what yeah. What went down? Yeah. Where'd you guys end up? Where'd you land? What are you working what are, on? What are we doing, right. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, JasperSoft got acquired about six months ago by Tipco. Um, our focus is embedded business intelligence. Um, we have a large developer community, um, hundreds of thousands of applications today embed JasperSoft, and that's kind of our distinctive angle on the BI market. There's just so many players. Um, and uh, Tipco is looking to take a bigger role in the analytics market. Um, some of you may know that the, uh, Tipco already has a data visualization product called Spotfire, uh, part of their portfolio. And the JasperSoft piece now complements that. So there are two distinctive use cases in the market. Data visualization focused on analysts, and then embedded BI focused on developers. And so together we are now Tipco Analytics, sort of a new group within Tipco focused on becoming the number one player in the analytics market. You know, I've always been impressed with Tipco going back to the old Tipco bus. They've been dealing with distributed computing for a while. Now you're starting to see this decentralization of distributed computing kind of coming yeah. back, right? I yeah. mean, yeah. Amazon represents distributed computing yeah. in kind of a chaotic you know, way, but it's yeah. still, as a resource pool, a lot of tooling, what is the developer and opportunity, right? Because yeah. I mean, you could look at analytics and saying, customer A might not be the same as customer B on the deployment side, right. but how do you create a scalable product? So what have you guys learned and what's your observation mm. in this new, as Andy Jassy calls it, the new normal? Because the game is still the same, yeah. but just the environment's different. Yeah. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about the role that Cloud has played for JasperSoft and now uh, for Tipco Analytics. So. Um, we, um, you know, we, there is a problem in the analytics market. We're spending billions of dollars on, uh, on analytics. Um, it's a top priority for CIOs. And yet there's another industry uh, analyst number out there that 25%. And 25% is the actual number of information workers that use BI. So despite the spend, despite the focus, we're still like three quarters of information workers today don't interact with BI on a regular basis. You're an information worker, I'm an information worker. I think certainly from my perspective, even though I work at a BI company, I don't use the stuff every day, right? And I think I could, it's just not in a digestible form. It's not easy form. enough. It's not easy enough. The problem boils down to we have other preferred tools. Right? We have applications, if you're a salesperson, it's your CRM, if you're marketing, it's marketing automation. We have our preferred applications. What we really want is analytics inside those applications. And that's the whole embedded intelligence uh, aspect of JasperSoft. So JasperSoft is focused on giving developers the tools to build analytics, reports and dashboards into their applications. So where does the cloud fit in? Um, the problem is a lot of applications today don't have analytics. They might have a pretty chart, from a charting library, they don't have an analytic platform because it's too costly and it's too complex. And so what the cloud has enabled us to do, and about a year and a half ago, JasperSoft launched the first utility-priced BI server on the AWS marketplace. 18 months later, we have over 1,300 customers and we are the number one selling product on the Amazon marketplace. So talk about the embedded thing, because I want to get that was a good po yeah. point, because now you have a developers who are embedding analytics. Jeff Kelly and I were just talking on the opening segment, and you know, obviously he's the big data analyst, yeah. but I was kind of poo-pooing the whole big data segment, because I'm seeing data, yeah. fabric, really yeah. being embedded, so it's yeah. really not a pure play category. 
Right. And if you look at the revenue of say Hortonworks S1 filing and Cloudera not going public and getting with the Intel, kind yeah. of like a cover, um, maybe the big data is not a market, maybe it's just an embedded feature of yeah. everything else, like, yeah. like cloud. Yeah, well I think, I think do you, the, do you, what's, yeah, what's your the, take the, on that? The, 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 I think the, the challenge of big data, like analytics in general, is making it digestible to your average consumer, right? Today it's primarily focused on you know, analysts. What can analysts get out of these new data stores, right? And it's great, and there's more insight. Uh, newer sources tell us different things. We have a broader perspective on our customers from all these new social media feeds and so on. But fundamentally, in order for that big data to become useful, it has to be made small. We, we like to say we need to make big data small by embedding sort of the insights that are extracted from big data into the applications that people actually use every day. So you and me are going to use something, and we want the insight from big data fed to us in a way that's useful. So let's talk about the visualization piece. You mentioned the BI that helped the information workers. Let's go back in time. We had Alan Cohen on here from Illumio, hot startup, he's a 25 year veteran uh, in the tech industry, and I always love the, the tech veterans, always kind of go back and say, we're living the inflection point like client like, server. Yeah. You know, or like PC revolution. So I think the PC revolution, I've said on theCUBE, kind of as a haymaker, this, this revolution's like putting together PC and client server at the same time. Right. There's a right. massive, yeah. it's like the combination of two, those two massive forces. But let's take the PC. Excel was a productivity tool yeah. on paper. Yeah, it was, yeah. you used spreadsheets. Before that, it was MIS department and the mainframes, right? You had to go get the reports. BI is kind of like that. I mean, it's not a great analogy, but it's kind of one that humanizes that, okay, Excel made the humans at the desktop use Excel right. and numbers. Yeah. Versus the old way was go to the IT geeks and get the right. data. Yeah. That's kind of happening now. So what are you seeing there that's going to get that kind of obvious Use case is it the tooling? Is it um, the developers? Yeah. What's what's going to make what's BI pervasive? Make it, really Tableau pervasive? is a great example. They've yeah. shown that getting stuff up and running is easy. Yeah. So um, I think we're, there's some positive signs that we're going to get to pervasive BI finally. Um, ultimately, what it's about, and this is the mission for Tibco Analytics, it's about finding the way to get BI out of the tools. So in spite of the success of the Tableaus of the world. It's still kind of focused on the same population, which is data analysts, people who like to spend their time in data. And that's well and fine, but the majority of us don't have the inclination. Doesn't matter how cheap or easy the tool is, we're not going to have the expertise or the inclination or the time to go and use a Tableau. It's just not going to happen. And um, so fundamentally what we need to do is we need to get insight out of the tool into the applications um, or find ways for the analysts who are crunching numbers to share more readily with the rest of the population. You know, that part of the market has not evolved at all. I mean, we're basically just emailing spreadsheets or emailing reports, but that's not how people work today. People yeah, so work- So give an example, that's a great point. So yeah, I would agree, maybe it's, it, maybe it's evolving a little bit. There's some yeah. like, some bright spots. You can see the light way yeah. at the tunnel. But take that use case forward. I'm emailing spreadsheets around today. What's yeah. the embedded scenario use case look like in the ideal future state? What, what it looks like is that inside any application where there is an element of data, and that's pretty much all applications, um, you are going to have interactive BI that's part of the application. And so you will have certain pre-built reports and dashboards that are going to be useful to you, that have been pre-prepared by a developer, but you'll also have the capability to ask your own questions, but within that application. So if I'm a sales rep today, and uh, I'm using a CRM, I want to have my analytics relevant to me inside of the application. I don't want to have to go to a separate report or dashboard outside of the application. I need to have something inside the application that's pertinent to me. So talk about the, um the cloud now. So, again, back to Jeff Kelly's conversation today was, there's a big data theme here at this event, but it's not front and center. Yeah. It's just native into the conversation. People I talk to are just like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, we use Redshift, we got Kinesis. It's yeah. starting to see that closed loop, you got CloudTrail is, right. is a big data application if you look at it that yeah. way. Yeah. So, this is now native into the Internet of Things meets yeah. Yeah. data center. 
What do you guys view on that? Do you see the same picture? Yeah, I, 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 big data is a natural for the cloud because of the sort of scale out architecture that's required for many of these new data stores. Um, a lot of the new big data uh, sources are, are cloud native, and you know, that's where they're generated, right? It's not like we're trying to forklift data warehouses that are on premises into the cloud. Most of the cloud data is, um, is, is now cloud native. And so that was essentially the opportunity that we saw when we came out with uh, Jasper Soft for AWS. Um, we, uh, there's two approaches to cloud analytics today. One is I'm going after a business user like a VP of marketing and they want to see their campaign analytics. I'm going to build a SaaS application focused on them and they can buy it by the month. That's not what we were focused on with Jasper Soft for AWS. What we were focused on are the developers in IT that already had a ton of data in the cloud you just look at the growth of Amazon S3 to kind of give you an indication of the amount of data that's cloud native. And there's all of this data, and yet there's no analytics service right now that matches well with how people are used to buying um, the rest of the cloud infrastructure. I can buy compute, I can buy databases, I can buy app servers, all by the hour. I can't buy BI. Uh, until we, we launched Jasper Software AWS, you could not buy BI by the air. All right, so talk about the, let's talk about Spotfire for AWS. Is that in the marketplace? What kind of deal was it? Was it a joint integration? Is it more of a... Yeah. So give us the details of that deal. So that was an announcement we made today. Uh, so we now have um, a world-class data visualization product. So this is a product that has been ranked in the leaders quadrant by both Gartner and Forrester. Um, so a, a incredibly rich um, data visualization product that is now in the cloud, available starting at less than a dollar an hour. Again, we are disrupting the market from a uh, business model perspective. This is the only data visualization product where you can buy it for less than a dollar an hour. All right, so I want you to rewind that. I'm actually tweeting this out right now um, on the crowd chat. So rewind that, I want to just make so sure I capture it. Today that. we announced Spotfire for AWS. In the cloud, for how in much? In the cloud. So it starts at less than a dollar an hour and go on the marketplace and you see the actual number. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's 68 cents, I can't remember exactly. The point is less than a cup of coffee. Uh, you can get a world-class data Yeah, but you, you got product. heroin in that coffee. You got a <laughs> total addiction, right? So what's the real number? Well, <laughs> yeah. well, the real number is obviously how long you use it, but that's you, the so beauty the, of the But this is the cloud it. consumption, land yeah. and expand. Show the value, yeah, offer the low value. entry price. Yeah. It's, it's the, what, what the utility model is doing for analytics, it's allowing people to experiment with, with zero risk. There is no contract that you sign, right? There is no salesperson that you talk to. You press a button, you, if you like it, you continue. If you don't like it, or if you want to take a break, you, you press a button again to stop it, and you only get charged for what you use. That is the fairest pricing model. You ask any user, that's what they want. And now we have it for both uh, an embedded BI solution and for yeah. a data visualization And this, this is the proven go to market really in cloud, right? You got to have some sampling, if you will, yeah. lower price, frictionless entry. Yeah. In some cases, freemium, right? Yeah. We have that Absolutely. with our crowd chat, which is a born yeah. in the cloud on Amazon. Now the issue is ongoing. Yeah. They could budget for it. Yeah. So I'm a user, this is the use case, right? Yeah. I play with it, yeah. I get some value, yeah. put up my credit card, expense it, or whatever they do, shadow right. IT, I right. guess it's now called you know, buy as you do, buy yeah. by the drink. Yeah. But then now I say, okay, I, I want to use this into production or yeah. in more. Yeah. I then shift the budget into that. So that's kind of your strategy. Right, we want to give people a zero risk way to try our data visualization product and do it in a way that's super simple, so it's all in the cloud, you press a button and it's up and running. Okay, so tell me what happened inside the company to get this approved. There had to be some naysayers, you don't have to name names, but like, yeah, yeah, you know, no, it, no, we it can't was, do that, we were giving the farm the, away. <laughs> the, uh, the good fortune was that the Jaspersoft for AWS exper experiment that we started a year and a half ago has been phenomenally successful. Yeah. And there were you know, concerns that we were going to cannibalize our own business, yeah. right? We, uh, we had sales guys selling 30K a year subscriptions, and now we were introducing something starting at 48 cents an hour. And you know, there was legitimate concerns that, hey, are we going to just siphon off our mainstream business? Uh, we did it in a clever way such that um, we really went after a market that was underserved today. Uh, companies that you know, would never consider BI, really, because it's too expensive. And so I'll give you an example yeah. of a customer, um, SiliconANGLE, so in Silicon Valley, yeah. uh, 
lots of recruitment firms, right? It's good business for recruiters, but they're also, you know, it's a competitive market, so how do you stand out? Uh, well, one of our customers, one of our early adopters of Jasper Software AWS called Sage Human Capital, um, 25 people, uh, the CEO believed that if they could give, if he could give his customers, his clients, better visibility into the recruiting process with data, that he could stand out. And so he had the idea, but he didn't have an IT team. He found Jasper Software AWS. Four hours later, he had his first dashboard. This is the CEO, right? He had his first dashboard up and running, and it cost them all of you know, $2. Um, because of that, they were able to build a uh, whole dashboard that they provide to their customers. They can see what's happening in the pipeline, what, what uh, candidates are saying vis-a-vis -a, -vis a particular posting. Um, customers love the visibility. He has, in two years, he has quadrupled his business and he's doubled in yeah. staff. And so it's easy for him, how about the integration for him? Yeah. So he's got no IT, so what did he do? He, did he call you guys or he just went to Amazon? No, so this is the beauty of the marketplace. We built a, um, so marketplace you go and you press a button and it's up and running and your credit card is being charged. But we, what we also focused a lot on at Jaspersoft was we wanted to, our design goal was that the person buying would never have to talk to anyone. To buy, to get up and running, to get into production. And so we built a whole lot of self-service tools, online university, community forums around the offering. So that's essentially what happens today. And that's why we, are allowed, we can charge that price. Yeah. There are no people involved. Right, there's no support yeah, yeah. call, I mean, it's, it's all, all online. It's all yeah. online, yeah. I mean, the marketplace, it's, just, it's the retail, it boggles my mind how Amazon just has that tool formula, they win the platform, win on the tooling and packaging. In this case, if you take, think, book, book uh, seller and retail, yeah. it's all in the and packaging, you, right? So yeah. the packaging it's here the is packaging direct. The packaging is beautiful. And it's clearly popular, and like, it's marketplace has been around for two years. We're 1,900 products now are in the marketplace. Okay, so I got to, since you're the product, I got to do a little biz dev for our CrowdChat uh, products. I got to ask, so, so I want to use your product for our CrowdChat. So we run yeah. the CrowdChats, we have all these hashtag conversations, and it's awesome, it's all hosted on Amazon. We store the conversations and chat it. Can I use your product, and how would I import that data into the analytics? You just tell us where the data lives, right? So we can read anything from flat files to relational data stores to Hadoop, Mongo, any of the and newer data stores. Text, you can take all the text, do kinds of stuff um, with it. Spotfire has a text analytics component. Yeah, Jaspersoft doesn't do unstructured, but Spotfire does. So, okay. and it, now with uh, the, um, Spotfire for AWS is probably the product you're looking for. Um, and you could be one of our first customers, John. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing deals on theCUBE, this is what it's all about. We love theCUBE. Yeah. That's, I love talking to product people because this, the, the, the product is the very key nuance in the cloud because yeah. you mentioned it earlier, you had to do some things, pricing is just one indicator, but you got to price after you got the product positioning. Mm -hmm. So what about, let's drill down into what you had to do to satisfy that core business. The sales guys out there saying, yeah. hey, yeah. I got to make my bonus, right. I got my product, got my named accounts, yeah. whatever. So what happens to those guys? Yeah, right? so what's the positioning? How yeah. did you slice and dice the positioning? Did you have to throttle back some features? Did you have to shift yeah. a little bit on the product side? You're a product guy too, John, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there was, a, there was a little bit of feature, uh, essentially one feature which is multi-tenancy, which we kept um, out of the, uh, of the 48 cents an hour product. Um, but uh, what, what, uh, what really worked, what we're seeing working now is, um, it's kind of come full circle. So these customers, as I said that before, would have never bought an annual subscription. Doesn't matter how good the sales guy is, 3K a year for a 20 person recruiting company is just way too much, right? So, um, so we got these new customers we wouldn't have got before. Now what's happening is as they get confident and they grow their deployments, um, they're seeing the benefit of maybe adding, uh, you know, going to a bigger machine, getting commercial support, and our sales guys now see our Amazon customers as kind of our lead source. They can convert yeah. those to it's annual It's entry level on the product map. So it's entry level, and as they grow, the sales yeah. guy says, hey, I can, uh, you know, it's I can It's really net new to you a, guys, so it's really new business. It's, it's absolutely net new business, and a lot of it is coming through the um, uh, AWS customer base. Yeah. So they find out about Jaspersoft, you go to the marketplace, yeah, you yeah. can't avoid Jaspersoft, right? We're there everywhere, listed yeah. number one in BI and big data. 
and it's a great position to be. Yeah. And so people find us, and they they had never heard of us maybe before. It's until a great they came business model because what you have is essentially serving a new customer base. There's some work up front. You guys did some work, and you know, that costs you some yeah. cash. So you do that. But the leverage on the back end is awesome because now you've got massive. direct leads yeah. coming in on an upsell, yeah. and then it's the hockey stick can kick yeah. up. You get lucky if it goes well, then you kick up to the hockey yeah. stick. No, I mean, the, you know, the, I, I, uh, I can't say enough good things about Marketplace, um, and I'm not being paid to say that. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the Marketplace allowed us to get to the cloud with practically zero investment, right? Because all the billing, the infrastructure, all of that was taken care of. The only investment we, we made was marketing, just getting the word out. Yep. Uh, and again, there, um, the Marketplace itself is kind of our primary source now. So, just phenomenal in terms of our uh, cloud uh, efforts. Well, the cloud migration is here, Carl. Appreciate you coming on theCUBE again. Good to see you again. You're seeing the transformation, the shift, but more importantly, there's real business value, right? So you have a yeah. lot of frictionless way to get new products to the market. And Amazon with the marketplace and all the new announcements, just adding more and more services. Watch out, you yeah. know. Love coming to the show because I always you know, see just the verification of the dominance of Amazon. Yeah. And then I think it's just not, it's just getting started. So yeah. obviously people are worried on the other side, outside of the Amazon camp. Right. Yeah. Uh, we'll be watching it closely. Thanks yeah. for coming. We're going to try Spotfire. We'll take a look at it. Yeah, uh, if you've you got any issues, let me know. Well, that's You'll the number one thing is visualization. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, visualization is everything, yeah. right? Yeah. Storytelling, yeah. you know, people want, it should be very easy almost, you know, for a user to push a button and have yeah. that easy experience. Yeah. Great. So, All Carl, right, thanks John. for coming thanks on. Thanks for having me on. Uh, Tibco, formerly with Jaspersoft, now at Tibco. We're, we're here inside theCUBE bringing all the big data in the cloud. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>